So, three one five big right? Okay. Okay. Okay, Jay. So, Jay. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to make sure we catch the items uh, that you need that two third votes. Yeah. You know the uh, the the I guess some bullet from one items here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Very good. Okay. Uh, Jeff, thumbs up. Okay, good and good. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, council members. We'll now re reconvene. Uh, we do have some council members that do have to leave um, beginning from 4.30, so some items we want to pick up right off the bat. Let's pick, pick up uh, uh, on page three, item uh, resolution 323-12, please. Resolution 323-12, require immediate payment for legal services rendered in good faith. The Hawaii County Council, under the authority of the Hawaii Revised Statutes, HRS, 103 J203 and Hawaii Administrative Rules 3 120. Attorneys James Kalachika and Michael Matsukawa were hired to provide legal services to the Hawaii County Council. State that it is the policy of the Hawaii County Council that payment of all bills shall meet the timely requirements of the HRS and that bills or invoices shall be paid within 15 days of adoption of this resolution. This resolution, this resolution was introduced by Ms. Ford and waived by the Finance Committee. Ms. Ford. Move to approve resolution 323 12 and file all related communications. Second by Ms. Smart. Ms. Ford, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Um, as you hit read this, I've gone to the HRS, the HAR, the county charter, um, and uh, indicating that we are legally obligated to pay for bills that are rendered. This resolution is to get the bills paid for two attorneys hired, not for the chairman and the, and the county clerk, but by the chairman and the county clerk. As, as you read through these, you will see that in the Hawaii Revised Statutes, the legislative branch has its, its own chief procurement officer, and that is Mr. Yagong, who is specifically named in the HAR by name. Um, and as you go through all of these rules, you will see that um, the HAR and the HRS indicate um, that the chairman of the respective councils of the different counties of Hawaii are the chief procurement officer of the county. As you go farther into this, hold on, let me get my paperwork out. I kept looking for different support that the director of finance shall approve or issue any, uh, issue any requisition, purchase order, voucher, warrant in accordance with the schedule, that's the budget, and upon the request of the legislative body and that we must pay these bills in 30 days for delivery of goods and services. That HRS gives the authority, um, as I said before, to the, the, uh, the chief election uh, procurement officer for each one of the counties. And our charter says the finance director shall be responsible for the procurement, et cetera, of material supplies, et cetera, except as otherwise provided by this charter or any law, and the HRS is obviously a law. Um, and that the county charter also says that any modifications of this have to be consistent with requirements of state law. I've underscored everything to let the council members know the most of the, the applicable portions. So, I am trying to get the council to authorize the payment of these, these bills. One has already been rendered and is way over 30 days, and the council county is accruing interest. I believe if we don't pass this, that not only the council, but the finance director and the entire Office of Corporation Council may be subject to some exposure for violating the, the HRS. I've attached Exhibit A. If you look on the second page of Exhibit A, this comes from the HAR. 3-120 lists the chief procurement officers in the state of Hawaii. And if you look at the very bottom of page two, the, for the county of Hawaii, the Hawaii County Council is named the chairperson, the Honorable Dominic Yagong. Now, my understanding of the hiring of these two people, these two attorneys was not as uh, representatives of either the chair or the, or the county clerk in their personal capacities. It wasn't even for them in their official capacity. It was because Corporation Council told this council that they were conflicted, that every council, uh, every deputy council was conflicted, and for many months they kept insisting on that. 
I kept arguing with them about it, and um, I kept telling them that unless we had litigation, there could not be a conflict. Mr. Ashita told me in front of this whole council that, whoops, he went to ODC, and it turned out that there was no conflict because there was no legislation. I even called the state attorney general's office and talked to one of the deputies who said that we must have legal counsel in order to operate. And for on the issue that we all know I'm talking about, we operated for months with corporation counsel claiming they had a conflict and then continuing to give us legal advice, which is what forced the chair and the clerk to go out and get a private counsel for the council, not for themselves. We are in trouble, I think, legally. Uh, if we don't pay these bills, and I'm asking this council to pay for the bill that has been rendered, and when the second bill comes in, that we that it be, um, this resolution authorizes, actually orders the immediate payment of these bills within a certain period of time. Thank you. Okay, further discussion? Mr. Pilato, uh, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for this resolution. And I will be, I'm speaking against it. For one thing, I didn't vote for this lawyer, and this council did not approve these lawyers, two of them. And uh, I, I'm, I was never informed of what they were supposed to do for the people of the county of Hawaii. I, till today, I have no evidence of what services they provided. In fact, these lawyers are not even claiming to have done anything for any of us. I've been patient. I've been waiting for information a very long time, and still, up till today, I'm not given a bill for services that may or may not have been done for me, or may or may not have been done for this council, and certainly what may or may not have been done for the people of this county. To me, it's very wrong, and I feel uh, extorted by these lawyers, and I think it's extremely wrong for this council to pay them for services that we didn't even see. So I'm strongly against payment for these counselors. Uh, what's his name? Kawachika and Masukawa. I'm strongly against payment. They didn't do anything for this county. Thank you. Ms. Gordon. Mr. Pilato, I apologize that I didn't go far enough with my statement. These two attorneys were hired. They have some, one of them has rendered a bill to the finance department and has been been advised not to pay it. If you look at the charter, it says that we hire special counsel by a vote of six council members. The HRS states that the chair of every council has the right to procure all these different services, legal services, whatever. And that was done in good faith, following the HRS. What you can, what I, I'm sorry that I left out is that we don't need to vote in order to hire legal counsel. We had no legal counsel. We were operating illegally. And that's why we needed to have the chair bring counsel in. And let me refresh the council's memory on this. The reason we didn't go into executive session is because we could only get, I think, four votes. We couldn't get enough votes to even go in executive session to have these attorneys explain to us what, why they were there and why they had been hired. So first of all, we've got a corporation counsel who basically walked away from us and said, we can't give you any legal advice and then continued to do it. And then we had a counsel who said, we don't want to listen to these attorneys that have been hired for us. So there was a problem. And so we never got into the session. And so all they were able to do was come to come to the HERO meeting, try to talk to us. One was on standby by phone, one was physically in, in the audience. And we, the council, not me, we, the council, refused to even talk to them. So we still had no counsel, no legal counsel. Corporation counsel has persisted in this, and I'm sorry, this myth that you've got to have special counsel to hire legal counsel. That is in direct contradiction of the powers of the chairperson and also the HRS as to what the chairperson is allowed to hire, what services, professional services they're allowed to hire. We are really jeopardizing ourselves if we don't pay a bill that was rendered in good faith on and on a contract that 
for which they were hired. I urge this council, let's get this cleaned up before the next council who knows nothing about this, situ about this situation. Um, I, I think we're in terror, we were exposing ourselves, in my opinion, and, it's, and I'm not an attorney, but this is my opinion based on my knowledge of six years on this council. We are exposing ourselves as council members, not just in our official capacities. I'm really fearful we're exposing ourselves in our personal capacities because only some of us were willing to take, to go into a meeting with, with attorneys that were hired for us when we had no other legal counsel. You can't come in four months down the road and say, oh, it was a mistake. I should not have ever said I had a conflict and therefore we've always been your legal counsel when in fact we operated for months without legal counsel on this particular issue, which I won't go into the issue. Thank you. Mr. Good. Thank you. Good. 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 Thank you. Um, I had legal counsel. The corporation counsel was my legal counsel. I refused, and it's on the record, to listen to these two lawyers to come into my executive session, and I would have to compromise my attorney-client privilege. It's clear then, and certainly clear now, if I had listened to two private citizens who happened to be attorneys that I didn't select to come into my executive session, then I would have to waive my attorney-client privilege. I have no conflicts to me then, now, and all the time. My attorneys are the corporation counsel. These two guys never represented me. I'm not here to discuss if Dominic can get uh, to put, um, can hire people. That's not the question. My question is exactly what this resolution says. Let's pay these guys for services rendered. Where are the services? What am I paying these guys for? What did they do? Those are not here. I will not vote to pay this guy for something I don't know what they did. Thank you. And and, and just so we can get the uh, the, the uh, direction of the discussion uh, going, uh, you know, in in the proper direction for us to make an informed decision. I think uh, we need to really understand the basis for which the legal services was not paid for or that uh, the finance department uh, through the advice of corporation counsel decided not to pay the not decided not to pay the invoice uh, basically what the uh, the corporation counsel is saying that according to the county charter what the county council need if the county council wants to hire special uh, special counsel you would need a two-thirds vote. Wouldn't mean you would need a six-member vote? And I think that's what Mr. Glogley referred to. He never voted, right? He never voted for who these uh, people were going to be. But here's the thing that, that I need to have uh, some stability here, some understanding. And uh, Mr. Hoffman, as well as Mr. Yoshimoto, will also know this because they did serve as chair as well. As the chairman of the council, you are the, the chief of procurement officer, and you have to abide by all the procurement laws as every other department head as well as the mayor. And every department head and every procurement officer for their department is allowed to procure professional services um, on, on several conditions, one of which is that if the item that you're going to procure the services for is below $25,000. So many times department heads, if the corporation council does not have the type of expertise to provide the information that the department heads need, they are allowed to go outside of that to get that legal, so as long as it's below $25,000. But the whole thing comes down to whether or not in this situation we needed six votes or not. Uh, you know, whether what we should have done is come to the council for, for six votes uh, to approve of the hiring of these folks, or whether it falls under the procurement. Please keep in mind, council members, that when we went to procure this contract, we worked directly with the with the department finance department procurement officer, which provided all the information that we needed to fill out to to secure these professional services, which was under the twenty five thousand dollars. But here's the real question: the question is, when the county charter says that you need a two thirds votes to hire legal counsel, the question is under what under what circumstances? So. And it's, it's really not clear in the county charter, as you know. It just said you need a two-thirds vote for special counsel. So what we did was we went back all the way back to the 1960s when the Charter Commission put this language in there, you know, to, to really determine what was the intent of this two-thirds vote. 
and we went back there, and, 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 uh, and this was language that hasn't changed one letter since it was installed back in, in, the, in the 60s when the, when the county had their charter. But this is some of the information that we, I got a listing here, but this is from 1979, for example. And this was a discussion on the very language of the charter. As you know, every 10 years, they have to go and discuss whether they want to amend the, the uh, charter. And here's the exchange that took place. On June 19, 1979, the, the Charter Commission touched on this issue of special counsel again with the following exchange. Mr. Kal Mr. Spencer Kalani Shudi addressed legal counsel Stuart Oda saying, I would like to point this to the attention of Stuart, section 5-2.5 special counsel, which is a section in the charter, the council made by two-thirds vote of its entire membership authorized the employment of special counsel for any special matter presenting a real necessity for such employment. That is in the charter. Mr. Oda's response was this. That is basically to hire special attorneys to represent the county in litigation. This is word for word now out of the discussion of this. So is to hire special counsel to represent the county in litigation. That is what it has been used for. Mr. Shooter responded, but was that the intent of it? I would assume that would give them the authority that they needed. Mr. Oda replied, the intent for litigation purposes, special matters like that the county attorneys wouldn't have the expertise and background. That's what differentiates this decision as far as going to the procurement process and going to um, you know the six votes. Uh, we did not bring uh, these folks together for to litigate against Corporation Council on the fact that they said they were in conflict. It was for them to take a look at the document and let the council know whether or not they feel that the Corporation Council was in conflict. That was what they were brought forward to do, to look at, and to uh, uh, bring forth the uh, uh, information to the Hawaii County Council. It was not for litigation. Sherry Broder, when we went and got the six votes to approval to the County Council, when we wanted to hire her because Corporation Council said our budget amendments was illegal. They said it was illegal. And so what we did was we tried to bring Sherry Broder forward, getting the six votes needed because if the, if the Corporation, uh, Corporation Council was incorrect, we were going to litigate that as a council. That's the difference. The two-thirds vote is when you're going to litigate, and this was to hunt. Higher professional services, as Ms. Ford said, that we didn't have. So, you know, just to let you folks know, I mean, that's really, that's really the question, whether a two-third vote should have been obtained to this or whether or not the procurement process already allows this for happening. And by the way, the department heads already do this. I mean, this is something that everyone else does in the county of Hawaii, as long as it fits those criteria under $25,000. So, anyway, I just wanted to put that out. Go ahead, Mr. Hawkins, you have the floor. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I think that's the heart of the matter that I have here. I'm not sure I fully uh, appreciate all the aspects of this, but uh, uh, is uh, someone from Corporation Council, Kathy uh, Garson, are you still there in Hilo? They're on, they're on the way, Mr. Hoffman. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Oh, I, you, you, I'd rather see Kathy rather than you. <laughs> like, my goodness. I can arrange for I that, mean, Mr. Hoffman. Uh, well, I understand, but uh, still. I, okay, Lincoln, we'll... Uh, <laughs> uh, and I mean that only in the fondest, uh, uh, fondest way, sir. Um, in my tenure as council chair for two years, I did not have a situation approximating a legal case, but I certainly did have one regarding the hiring of a lobbyist for the council when we discussed these matters before the state legislature and, you know, we went through that process and limiting contract. Uh, I took the ad additional step of going to the council and gaining uh, council support for that, I remember, but in the discussions in my memory, and please, it could be wrong, when you and I discussed this, uh, or it was at least in, perhaps even before the council, it was not required that I do that. I think we had a discussion at one time which said under the circumstances I was putting out, it was not required that we have a vote. 
Flash forward now to the situation that Mr. Yagong has just described to us and which this resolution pertains. Is it still, under the circumstances, is it still the Corporation Council's decision or advice that we needed to have a two-thirds vote on this? Or under the rules that Mr. Yagong just described as procurement officer, could he have gone ahead and done this without a council vote? You have to comply with both the state procurement laws as well as our county charter requirements. They are not mutually exclusive to each other. In other words, just because you comply with one doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have to comply with the other. The requirements are different for different reasons. State procurement exists to ensure integrity in the purchasing process. The charter requirements exist on the county side for the purposes of ascertaining and determining that there is a real, in fact, a real necessity and a supermajority of the council so agrees. So in other words, I don't disagree with what's in the resolution concerning the state procurement requirements. Those are all accurate statements. However, what's barren in the resolution is any reference to the charter requirements, specifically section 6-5.5 of the charter. In other words, you need both. In other words, you need both. Okay. Lincoln, please, without having that right immediately before me, could you let me know again exactly what that section says? Yes. It's section 6-5.5 of the charter. The council may, by two-thirds vote of its entire membership, authorize the employment of special counsel for any special matter presenting a real necessity for such employment. Okay. I understand now what you mean regarding that. The question then would come down as to whether what was being procured was special counsel or simply legal advice. That seems to be the crux or the question of the resolution. Is that what I'm, am I at least in the ballpark regarding the specification of what the decision on my part has to be? Well, generally, my understanding is special counsel, whenever there is an effort made to hire special counsel, it's generally because there is a legal or ethical necessity to do so. And actually, that language is contained in the charter, that specific phrase, a special matter presenting a real necessity. You know, since you asked the question, I think this might be an appropriate time to make the record very clear concerning some earlier allegations or representations that were made on the record. At no time was this counsel ever, as was suggested, without legal counsel. At the time that we brought the concern regarding a potential conflict to the attention of the counsel, it was made clear, because this is required as part of our rules of professional conduct, that in the interim time, we are to provide necessary services to protect the interests of the client, in this case, the county. And I can assure you, Mr. Hoffman and other members of the counsel, that that was done in this particular case. Also, this is not a situation, as was represented earlier, that this counsel or county, for some reason, was, quote, for months without counsel. That is not true. At the time we brought this to your attention, the counsel collectively decided not to authorize the hiring of special counsel. At that point in time, we went back to the disciplinary counsel, confirmed that we could still, notwithstanding that decision of the counsel, we could still continue to represent the county. So we got the clearance from them in this case. So that needs to be made clear, that I think that, you know, at no time was this counsel ever, I think, as was suggested, left without counsel. Now, with respect to your specific question, Mr. Hoffman, in terms of the circumstances regarding the hiring of these attorneys, we attempted to exercise our due diligence and ascertain exactly for what reason they were hired. When Ms. Garson called one of the attorneys to ask, you know, what is this about? Who do you represent? 
He wouldn't even answer that question. Basically told Ms. Carson, I'm not telling you. So, you know, I guess I'm as much in the dark as you are about that. Okay, I, 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 what I'm trying to do without trying to get into the history or background, and I'm not saying who is right, wrong, or indifferent regarding the uh, history of this, as you've just pointed out, Mr. Ishida, I'm only trying to find out for the purpose of my determination on this particular resolution, the question or the crux of the matter, as I see it, or as I'm uh, trying to understand it, the question is whether it was proper for the chair of this council to hire under the rules, of both state procurement rules and our county charter, whether he had the right to hire two individuals to uh, in this particular uh, situation that was not, as I understand it, uh, concerned, I think he mentioned, about any litigation at that particular time. And, and the reason all I'm trying to clarify, I'm trying to get down to the fundamental issue of what I'm voting on here. Uh, 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 Mr. Palago has very clearly stated uh, this was, uh, uh, he's considered this as being under some uh, rules regarding special counsel. Uh, I, I, or I understand that he, he never could have voted on this particular issue, therefore we shouldn't have proceeded. But my understanding of some latitude that the chair has is simply being able to hire a person without under contract for a particular form of service less than 25,000. <coughs> and my, my problem is now, if I'm in the ballpark, I have to make my determination on that basis. You know, so I, I, that's a comment rather than a uh, uh, a, um, a asking for any uh, comment or, or response. Uh, thank you in any case, Mr. Ushida. Appreciate it. Thank you. And before I go to Ms. Smart, because Ms. Smart is actually next, I just want to say one big thing that I missed is in order for the chair or any department to hire someone under the procurement laws, they have to be hired. That's people that are already on the procurement list. There's a list that comes out at the very, you know, so, you know, we, 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 we got the listing from the procurement officer of the Cuts County of Hawaii. Go ahead, Ms. Martin. Okay, this is quite a convoluted issue. Um, I understand that. And really, the majority of my knowledge comes from, quite frankly, the newspaper articles. Um, it's my understanding, according to this argument, that since there was no intention of litigation, that is the basis of the argument. One thing I just picked up that on what you said, Mr. Yagong, is that you actually conferred with finance to, to go through this process? I, co I conferred with the procurement officer because that's how you, you do uh, procurement contracts. And they at no time um, brought up the fact that you would need the two-thirds uh, vote in order to move forward with this? That is correct. That is correct. Um, and, and what is the and the basis of the objection and the not paying the bill is because of the claim of it being special counsel. It referring to the uh, the county charter that says to hire special counsel you need a two thirds vote. So who is making the decision not to pay the bill? Corporation counsel advise uh, the finance committee. I'm sorry, the finance director. Okay. Uh, all right, I, I can see the point in needing the litigation in order to have it be deemed a, a special counsel. I can follow that logic. I cannot follow the logic of um, the finance department going through the step-by-step -step process with you and then denying payment of the bill. I'm having a little bit of issue with uh, moving forward as, in the words of the attorneys, uh, doing the work on good faith. I think if there were concerns, that's when it should have been brought up. Um, and maybe at that point, um, then the, it, it either could have come forward for a vote or not done. Um, I think in the way that we did this, these lawyers did the work on good faith. There was no advice at that point in time that there needed to be the two-thirds. And I'm quite concerned if the county isn't paying bills that are procured in good faith. 
Um, I'm not saying that's the perfect answer. I'm saying I have concerns of the ramifications if we don't pay this bill. Um, all the rest of it is something that is negligent on the county side and making sure that um, whether the advice to uh, the clerk and the chairman was the proper one at the time they were seeking advice on how to move forward with this, whether that advice was proper or not, I think is our fault not the lawyers and i have a problem with not paying a bill to a lawyer that believes he's doing the work and going to get paid for it when the advice internally is what's at issue um, i understand uh, mr palago's concerns and uh, just because some of us haven't been involved in all aspects of the issue that this all revolves around, it's unfortunate that a lot of my information has to come from the media just because of the nature of it. But I do have a lot of concerns. If advice was given improperly internally by the county um, on how to move forward with this, I have a problem on uh, putting that penalty on the lawyer that did the work. Let's go to Hilo. Uh, anyone from Hilo? See, now let's come back here. Go ahead, Mr. Oh, Mr. Board. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Oh, okay. Is that Jay? Go ahead, yeah. Jay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sorry. Um, okay. Uh, I'm trying to make the issue as clear um, as possible. I know it seems a little muddy at this point, but, um, you know, for me, we need to look at the charter. We need to, you know, be in compliance with the charter and with uh, the state procurement laws. So, you know, Mr. Ishida read the, the provision that provides for a special counsel. Uh, my question, I guess, would be, is there any difference between um, obtaining special counsel or legal counsel? Because as I see it, they're the same thing, uh, meaning you would have to follow the same procedures, whether you're getting, quote, unquote, special counsel or just legal counsel to assist the, um, the counsel. Anyway, Mr. Ishida, would you like to comment on that question? I don't think that there's any requirement that it be limited to work involved in active ongoing litigation. Anytime you attempt to procure special counsel, an attorney, licensed attorney who will be making an appearance on behalf of the county, basically appearing in our, in our stead, in place of us, that to me triggers the requirements of section 6-5.5. Okay, and, then, and that's how I see it. I, uh, we have the charter, it, it states clearly um, um, that you know, we need two-thirds vote of the council to approve special counsel um, when there's a, a real necessity. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't um, have any uh, reason to dispute the good faith basis in which the services uh, were procured. Um, I don't know what happened uh, between uh, the chair or the clerk and, and the finance department. I'm not sure the finance department wants to come up and address this matter but you know in any event council members that's how I see it that you know we have this charter requirement and there is a process or procedure to be followed and that was the advice given uh, you know by our corporation council so uh, I'm in agreement with uh, Mr. Palago's interpretation at this time thank you anything further from Hilo before I come back to uh, Kona mm -hmm. Chief Enoch, um, Ms. Ford? Thank you. I must respectfully disagree with Mr. Ishida. He keeps mixing apples excuse and oranges. Excuse me, point of order, Mr. Chair? It is a, excuse me, I'm speaking no, no, Mr. I understand. Ishida. But Mr. Chair. Thank you. So I was going to say. One second, Brenda. I'm sorry, you have a point of yeah. uh, personal privilege? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Um, that's her second time speaking. So this is going to be her third. So are you going to, um, I guess, uh, make a motion or to uh, suspend the rules? Move to suspend the rules. Okay, there's a motion. To suspend. There was a motion just made to suspend the rules. Any second, uh, second by Mr. Uh, Pilago? Uh, motion on the floor to suspend the rules so yes. we can uh, continue discussion after. I'd like to speak twice. on the motion. Go ahead. Thank you. I realize that there are people on the council who don't want to do this. I understand that. And there are people on the council who do want to get the bills paid. That I would be one of them. But to shut down discussion before the, the explanation is very clear in everybody's mind is unfair. It's unfair to the council members. It's unfair to the public. 
it's unfair to the attorneys who did service in good faith. So I request that this council vote to suspend the rule so we can get some clarity around this issue. Thank you. Okay, anything further on the motion to suspend? Yes, I get that. Go ahead, Mr. Nishi. Okay, well, because we received communication 908.1, and it states from um, James Tawat Chica, and in the second paragraph, it said he was contacted and employed by County Clerk Jamit Kawuchi and Chair Dominic Egon to provide certain legal analysis and advice to them. So, okay, hold on. We got to vote on the motion to suspend first. But that's why I'm voting that, against it. Thank you. Okay, okay, very good. Any further discussion on the motion, County Clerk? I need you to take a vote on the uh, on the motion to suspend, which would allow um, council members to speak more than um, twice. Okay, there's a motion on the floor to uh, to suspend the rules. Any further discussion of motion to suspend? Seeing none, I'll go ahead, Madam Clerk. Ms. Ford? Aye. Mr. Altman? Aye. Mr. Ikeda? No. Mr. Onishi? No. Mr. Palago? Aye. Ms. Smart? Aye. Yoshimoto? No. Very gone. Aye. Very gone. You're five eyes. Okay, the motion passes to suspend the rules. So with that, Ms. Ford, you have the floor. And then Thank I'll go you. to Mr. Pilago. Go ahead. Thank you. I appreciate that, and thank you for the votes. First of all, let me go back to special counsel. Mr. Ishida is correct when he says that Section 6-65 or 6.5 in the Charter says that if we're going to hire special counsel, special counsel, it says in the Charter, that must be by a vote of a minimum of six of us. He's absolutely correct in that. I have never argued that point at all. However, Mr. Yugong has just read you the intent of that language in the charter, uh, that it is for litigation. That's the only reason that we do that. Let me read from the Charter Commission. Let me see what date this is. I don't know what the date is. The last Charter Commission, Mr. Ishida gave a discussion in there, um, a, a discussion with Ms. Jarman, who was on the um, Charter Commission at that time. He says, I am the legal representative of the council, so long as they are acting within the course and scope, which means I'm their legal representative. But there are multiple safeguards in place. I've already talked about the rules of professional conduct, the creation of Mr. Ho'okama's position as a legal specialist for the council. Oftentimes, and this has come to pass, if a council member takes issue with a decision or opinion from my office, they seek the assistance from the county clerk, they get a second opinion. There's another lawyer in here that can function just like I do. The only difference between Mr. Ho'okano and I is if it's actual representation, making an appearance as a party in litigation, that has to be me speaking of himself because that's what the Charter requires. So he even told the Charter Commission if it's litigation, he is it. He's it. And if we want special counsel, then the Charter says we have to do it by a vote of six. And Mr. Yagong has explained special counsel means litigation. At the time, Mr. Yagong hired these attorneys. We did one, we did not have any lit litigation. So we did not need special counsel. We did not need a vote. Secondly, the HRS, the HAR, and our charter says that he is the chief procurement officer for the legislative branch. And in addition to that, hold on. In addition to that, county charter in section 10-14, central purchasing states, the Department of Finance shall be responsible for procurement of all materials, supplies, equipment, and services required by any agency of the county, except as otherwise provided by this charter, and there's nothing else in the charter except the section about special counsel, except as otherwise provided by this charter or any law. And the HRS is a law and it says Dominic is the chief procurement officer. Mr. Ishida, by the way, has said that I made a misstatement that he, we never were lacking legal representation. The qualification I said was on this special matter, which we all know I'm talking about. That's the only place that I know of where we didn't have special, we didn't have counsel because they kept telling us 
they were conflicted. And the rules of professional conduct say if an attorney is conflicted, they have to step back. They can't continue to give you legal counsel. But Mr. Ishida and Corporation Counsel in general continue to give us legal counsel in defiance of the rules of professional conduct. So we have a very, very clear definition of what special counsel is all about, litigation. And we have very clear documentation, as I put in this resolution, about getting advice and counsel from outside attorneys under the procurement law. They are not in conflict with each other. What is in conflict is the information that we keep getting from Corporation Counsel not to pay a legitimately rendered bill. And just because some counsel members said, we don't want to listen to them, that doesn't mean the services that were rendered are moot. We still have to pay the bill. This was done in good faith, and these men were brought to us to explain why there was a conflict. And we, as a body, not me as a person, refused to talk to them. We refused, as a counsel body, to talk to these people. And now, you know, no offense to Mr. Pilago, because I understand his position, because he hasn't seen anything or heard anything or read anything. I understand his position, but the position is these people were hired in good faith, and they had done their homework, and they came here to do the job they were hired to do, and then they were rebuffed. That's no excuse for not paying the bills. Thank you. And I think we need a recess. May I speak, please? Okay, one second. I told Mr. Pilago he has the floor next. Mr. Pilago, go ahead. Thank you for the courtesy, Jerry O'Gorman. Thank you very much. I'm very, very clear, and I restate my position again. To me, this is not a matter of special counsel. Special counsel requires six votes, and the corporation counsel finds that person who is going to be the special counsel, and the corporation counsel pays for it. I have no problems with special counsel. These guys are not special counsel. They're not special counsel. They're something different. Now, let me explain that, because everybody thinks I'm confused that I think these guys are special counsel, and I should be voting as one of the six. No, 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 no. This is not about special counsel. This is only about two lawyers, and the procurement officer can go ahead and get these two lawyers. Come to charter section 10-14 in purchasing subsection C states, all purchases, contracts, material supplies, equipment, and services shall be made in accordance with the Hawaii revised statutes and rules and regulations established by the state procurement policy office there, too. Very powerful statement. This is from this resolution itself. If we look at the third whereas, it says Hawaii revised statute 103-10. Any person who renders a proper statement for goods delivered or services performed pursuant to contract to any state agency of the state, to any agency of the state or any county, and then it goes on. You pay them within 30 days. Fine. I'll pay them within 30 days. Show me what they did. Now, here we're talking about good faith. Where are these lawyers' good faith? Where they're going to come give me a cost where I've got to prove payment to them, and I don't even know how much I'm owing these guys. That's not stated. And good faith, they show their good faith by telling me what they did and how much they're going to charge me for it, and I'll vote from that. But as of now, please don't misunderstand that these council members will never try to put words in my mouth because these guys are not special counsel, never were in my mind. But if you're going to ask me to pay, hey, follow the rules. Good faith, show me your bill. Thank you. With that, we're going to take a five-minute recess. Okay. Call Nancy Crawford.
because you never know. I do have to plug my meter though, <clears throat> so I'll be jiggling you so I can get my wallet. <clears throat> I'm leaving at 4.30. Yeah. I haven't bought a turkey yet. Council is an attorney employed by a state or political subdivision to assist in a particular case. And public meeting is so required.
Mr. Chair. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, let's. Can we start? Oh, shit. Mr. Yoshimoto has to leave pretty soon. Okay, we're going to begin in just a minute.